In a city where the twilight sky met the whispering willows, there lived a man named Leo. His life was a tapestry of colors, entwined with the melodies of half-forgotten songs and memories left to fade with the years. Leo, a playwright by heart and a dreamer by soul, found his inspiration in the ever-changing cityscape. Each day, he watched as the setting sun painted the sky in shades of orange and red, while the distant strains of a flute echoed through the streets. One fateful evening, as the city was bathed in the soft hues of dusk, Leo decided to pen a play that would capture the essence of his beloved city. He labored tirelessly, weaving words into stories, and characters into life. But in his pursuit of perfection, he discarded drafts upon drafts, never satisfied with his creations. One day, as Leo walked through the city's bustling streets, he stumbled upon a small antique shop. Inside, he found a block of green wax, resembling an uncut gem. The shopkeeper explained that the wax had been used by a renowned artist long ago to create intricate sculptures. With a spark of inspiration, Leo purchased the wax, intending to craft a masterpiece that would be the centerpiece of his play. Days turned into nights as Leo toiled over the green wax, carving it into intricate shapes and forms. He believed that this sculpture would be the embodiment of his city's soul. But in his pursuit of perfection, he discarded countless carvings, each falling short of his vision. Time passed, and the city underwent changes. People came and went, while Leo's hair turned silver. He realized that he had spent years chasing after the perfect play and the flawless sculpture, but in doing so, he had let life pass him by. One evening, as he sat by his dimly lit window, Leo looked at the green wax, now reduced to mere scraps. The city outside had transformed, the streets he once roamed were filled with unfamiliar faces, and the melodies of the distant flute had faded into silence. Leo picked up his pen and began to write, not a play or a sculpture, but a letter. It was a letter to the city itself, a tribute to the moments he had missed in his relentless pursuit of perfection. As he penned his regrets and hopes, he realized that the true beauty of life lay not in perfection but in the imperfections, the fleeting moments, and the melodies of half-forgotten songs. Leo understood that he had let his dreams consume him, and in doing so, he had lost sight of the real world and the people who had once filled it with color and meaning. The city outside continued to change, but Leo's letter remained as a testament to his realization. He no longer sought perfection but found contentment in the unfinished, the imperfect, and the moments that could never be recaptured. In the end, Leo's greatest masterpiece was not a play or a sculpture, but a letter that captured the essence of a life that had once been lost in the relentless pursuit of an unattainable dream.